Hey guys, back for another Tackle Tuesday, and today I wanna to talk about deep diving crankbaits. So deep diving crankbaits, like the Strike King 6XD, are my favorite search bait in the summer and fall for offshore bass. And these baits come in a lot of shapes, sizes, and colors. So today I wanna to walk you through the equipment and the baits I use to catch big bass in the summer and fall. So first off, there's all kinds of sizes of deep diving crankbaits. From the medium divers that dive anywhere from 8 to 10 feet, like a Strike King Series 5, all the way to the super deep divers, like the 10XD. And all these baits have their own purpose for different scenarios, and I will walk you through that right now. Okay, so first the medium divers, like a Strike King Series 5, 5XD, or even a Strike King Series 4. These crankbaits dive anywhere from 8 to 12 feet deep, and they're great in the post-spawn, right when the fish pull off of the bank uh, from the spawn, and these fish will group up on points, humps, and other offshore structure spots, and you can just crush them on these medium diving crankbaits. So as far as my colors go for a medium diving crankbait, I normally carry three in my boat, and that's it. The first is a sexy shad pattern, and I'll throw this color when the fish are keying on bait fish. Next is a sartreuse greenback color, and I'll throw this whenever the water clarity is less than about a foot and a half, or if the fish are keying on bluegill. The last color is a crawdad color, and normally I'll have like a red or an orange crankbait, and I'll throw this whenever the fish are in grass offshore, or if I'm fishing a river system in May and June, for whatever reason, even if the fish are keying on shad on river systems, they'll eat this red crankbait really well. And my favorite situation for throwing a medium diving crankbait is in the post spawn, when the fish first pull off the bank in May and June, and when they get on the first ledge off the bank. Normally this ledge is going to be in anywhere from 6 to 12 feet of water, and fish really like to position on brush piles this time of year. And what I'll do is actually throw that crankbait into the brush piles, and I'll reel it down until I hit one, just kind of pull my rod like you're seeing here, uh, and pull that bait through the brush, and then once it pops free, normally that fish will load up, and uh, it's a really fun way to catch some fish. It's a little bit challenging to figure out at first, but once you do, you're going to be catching a lot of big fish in the post spawn. As far as the equipment goes for these medium divers, I like to throw them on the seven foot medium white action bait casting rod. I don't need a super long rod uh, for these baits. They only dive about 10 to 12 feet deep, so I'm not really trying to maximize their depth. So I can get away with just using a seven foot rod, but you still want something with a lot of tip so that these fish can't pull the hooks out of their mouth. Speaking of hooks too, I like to upgrade my medium divers with 4 hot Gamakatsu EWG treble hooks and uh, I always change out the treble hooks in all my crankbaits. It's definitely put a lot more fish in the boat over the years for me. So just upgrade with those Gamakatsus or any other kind of extra wide gap treble hook and you're going to land a lot more fish. As far as my reel goes, I'm a little bit old school. I like to use a 5 to 1 gear ratio bait casting reel, and that's because I can get a little more torque out of that reel and it just makes it a little bit easier for me to wind it in. But when I am fishing these baits, I'm going to be winding them really fast. I'm not one to slowly reel my crankbaits. I'm always reeling it back to the boat as fast as I can because I think that this, these baits create a reaction strike when they hit off of rocks and sticks and stuff, so I'm always winding them back to the boat as fast as I can. Finally, for my line, I always throw my medium divers on either 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon line, and that makes sure that they get to their maximum depth, but that fluorocarbon also has pretty good abrasion resistance, so I can pull it through brush and rocks no problem. Next up are the deep divers, like the Strike King 6XD and 8XD. Now, these baits are great for fishing offshore ledges and humps and points in the summertime, and this is my go-to deep diving crankbait pretty much any time of the year. And as far as my colors go for a deep diving crankbait, I keep it simple again and just carry three colors. The first is a sexy shad pattern, and I'll throw this whenever the fish are keying on shad and the water clarity is between two to four feet of visibility. The next color is this sexy blueback herring color, and it's a little bit more subtle, and I'll throw this when the water clarity is greater than four feet. And then the last color is a, a blueback sartreuse crankbait. And I love this bait when the water clarity is less than two feet of water or when those fish are keying on bluegill. 
And my favorite situation for throwing a deep diving crankbait is in the summertime when the fish get offshore on the ledges and normally they'll be keying on brush piles again or rock piles or shell beds. And a lot of times when I'm fishing a deep diving crankbait, the fish are gonna be relating to some sort of current, whether that's current generated by a lake or just by wind. So look out for that current. That can be the key to getting fish to react to a deep diving crankbait in the summer. Now, if you have equipment I'm using with these deep diving crankbaits, I'll start off with the rod. I like to use a seven foot six medium heavy action crankbait rod. This is the Veritas version and I love this rod. It has a lot of tip to it and it basically bends in half when I set the hook on a fish and I really think that's important when fishing these deep diving crankbaits. You don't want those fish to pull the hooks out of their mouth. And again, speaking of hooks, I upgrade the treble hooks on this crankbait with two in size two Gamakatsu EWGs and uh, these hooks are amazing. They don't get hung in the brush really at all and they really pin those fish. So I would highly recommend those on your deep diving crankbaits. As far as my reel, again, I'm using a five to one gear ratio, gear ratio bait casting reel and I'm winding this as fast as I can when I get that bait out there. When I'm casting that bait out, I'm just cranking it back as fast as possible, trying to deflect this big bait off of any cover down there. And these baits have nice big bills on them and so that'll deflect a lot of the cover and you're not going to get hung up too much. And last but not least, for my line, I actually have two separate approaches. When I'm trying to maximize the depth of these deep diving crankbaits, I'll throw either 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon line. That'll get these baits down 16 to 18 feet deep when I'm trying to fish those really deep offshore structure spots. Sometimes though, fish want to eat a big crankbait like this and want a big profile bait, but they might be sitting in only eight to 10 feet of water where I'd normally throw the medium diver. And when that happens, I'll actually put 17 to 20 pound monofilament line on this uh, deep diving crankbait. And that will make this bait only run about 12 feet deep. And also you can just horse the fish in with this monofilament line. You can stick them and just grind them back to the boat. And it's an awesome way to catch fish that are in a little bit shallower water, but still want to bite a deep diving crankbait. So here's some footage from Lake Dardanelle in Arkansas in July when the fish were pulled off on their offshore ledges. But at Lake Dardanelle the ledges aren't actually that deep, they're only in about 6 to 10 feet of water and the fish are actually keying on really big shad this time of year and normally the gizzard shad will get between 5 and 8 inches long so a lot of times I'll try to throw a medium diving crankbait that dives 6 to 10 feet and I won't get any bites because the bait's just too small. So what I had to do was actually tie on a striking 6XD with 20 or 25 pound monofilament line and I'll actually throw that deep diving crankbait up into 4 feet of water and grind it back over the top of that ledge and I seem to get a lot more fish to commit to that big crankbait and I've caught multiple 25 pound bags doing that and it's just something that a lot of people won't do and they're scared of getting that big crankbait hung up shallow but if you upsize your line you're able to get away with reeling that bait in in super shallow water and you can catch some big bass. And last but not least, you have the super deep divers, the Strike King 10XD. Now these baits are awesome and they catch a lot of really big fish, but they're really situational. And these baits will dive anywhere from 25 to 30 feet deep, depending on how long of a cast you can make and how long your arm can last reeling them back to the boat. So as far as my colors go for this 10XD, I just carry two. The first is a pearl black splatter color. And a lot of times I think when you're fishing this 10XD in deep brush piles, because the bait's so big, I think it imitates a crappie down there and big bass will feed on crappie all the time. And I think that this uh, pearl black splatter color really imitates a crappie well. The other color I throw is a sartreuse powder blue back color. And this bait's great in dirty water or when the fish again are keying on bluegill. And my favorite situation to throw a 10XD is actually in the fall when the fish get anywhere from 20 to 30 feet deep. And in the fall, fish will actually go a little bit deeper than they do in the summertime and they'll get on the edge of main lake flats or on the ends of really long points and sit right on the edge of a creek channel on rocks and brush piles. And you can crank that big 10XD down there and I think it's just a bait that a lot of these big bass haven't seen before. And it definitely is a big fish bait, but I've also caught some smaller fish on it too. Uh, one big key I found is that it's good to have wind and cloud cover when you're fishing this 10XD to get them to commit to it. 
for the equipment on this 10XD, I like to throw a seven foot 11 inch medium heavy action bait casting rod. And this has a moderate tip to it. And this is actually the uh, 13 fishing Krankenstein rod. And I love this rod. It uh, loads up really well with this big deep diving crankbait. And uh, I'll create the treble hooks on this. These are uh, one knot owners and they're just amazing trebles for this big deep diving crankbait. And I've caught some giants on this bait offshore and I'm definitely glad I had those stout trebles because uh, some of the bass I'm catching might bend out the normal ones I use in my other crankbaits. Again, I'm throwing a five to one gear ratio bait casting reel with this 10XD, but for my line, I actually beef up the line a little bit. I'll throw this on 15 pound fluorocarbon line. It still lets that bait get down there pretty deep, but because this bait's so big, uh, I've had problems snapping the line on the cast with 12 pound test. So 15 pound test is that happy median, and it seems to work really well with these super deep divers. Well guys, that's just a brief intro into my thoughts on deep diving crankbaits. I could talk for hours on this topic. It's one of my favorite ways to catch big bass. And if there's anything you want me to talk about or that I didn't mention, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to make another video on it. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe down below and share this video out with a friend who might uh, be struggling with their deep diving crankbait fishing. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.